Hi, this is Matthias from MamaWorld.com and in this After Effects tutorial we are going to create this animation in sync with the music. And you can customize the shapes super easily and also adjust it to any kind of music you want. We're going to use our tool's automation blocks for After Effects and beat edit and you will be surprised how quickly we can actually create this animation. Let's go! Okay, in a nutshell, it's really just running the create random background shapes tool on separate layers of automation blocks in a comp. Currently, you can see we've got just a background and our music here. And we run it and I can say how many shapes you want. Let's say 25, what position, scale, uh, rotation and opacity they should have. And now it creates for me 25 of those random shapes. And to animate those, I use another tool, namely Beat Edit. And in Beat Edit, I just select the music I want to use and load it here. And now it detected these beats for me here, which you can hear as these click sounds. And then I can just choose one of the default animation presets of the Beat Wiggle component of Beat Edit. I want to animate 2D layers and let's just go for uh, position, rotation, scale, random pulses, for example, which creates these kinds of animations. And then I select all these background shapes that I created and apply. And this creates a whole bunch of keyframes and the result looks like this. But the cool thing about this process is not just that it's super fast, but also that it gives you full control. So you can control exactly how you want to animate these elements and you can also control exactly what kinds of random shapes you want to create with automation blocks. So let's start over and explain all of this again in a bit more detail. So here's our extension automation blocks, which comes with a ton of ready to use tools to automate all kinds of things in After Effects. If you search for background shapes, for example, you can see that there is a tool to create those background shapes here in the examples. And there are a few more hits in my user library. The examples category contains what is included in automation blocks by default and the user library are the tools which you either created yourself or downloaded from the community. In this case, all these random background shapes tools here are all downloaded from our community library. If you click on help here, the documentation opens and in the section access community library, you find links to download all these tools from Dropbox, Google Drive or sync them from GitHub. All these random background shape tools are actually variants of the main one over here and the main difference is that they create different kinds of random shapes. So this one creates sine waves for example and this one stars. And it is very easy to create such different variants of a tool in automation blocks because for each of those tools you can modify the source code to change it. But as you can see the source code is not scary programming code but it's these blocks here which you can modify super easily. We use this variant of the tool here which has another important modification. While the other variants create the random shapes all on a single layer this variant creates each shape on a separate shape layer, such that we can animate them easily. Let's first run the tool with the default settings. So by default it creates 25 shapes with a position anywhere in the comp area, with a random scale between 0 and 100% and with a random rotation between 0 and 360 degrees and a random opacity between 0 and 100, so completely random. This is already pretty close to what we want, but we want to change the actual shapes that should be used. In addition to the default random shapes, we want to use these musical notes which I have in this illustrator file here. So I create shapes from the vector layer such that I have a shape layer and then I reveal the actual path properties. For each of these four shapes we have one path now. Then I go to the block code of the tool to insert the shapes. Here at the very beginning is a list of all shapes that the tool is using. So each of these entries is one shape. We click on the cogwheel here to add four new entries to that list, one for each of the four new shapes. Then we duplicate this block here which contains the actual shape data. Let me delete the actual data such that you can see better what is going on and then we duplicate it three more times. To load a new shape into a block, we just select the path in the timeline and click the refresh button here. That way we can add our four new shapes to the tool very easily. Now let's delete all shape layers we created and run the tool again. As you can see, now the new shapes have been used as random shapes too. 
extra tip if you want to customize the colors of the random shapes here you have the list of those colors that are used and you can add remove or change colors however you want and if you now save this new variant of the tool in your user library the new shapes and colors are saved with it but now let me show you how we animate the shapes with our extension beat edit so here is a beat edit panel and this is your Swiss army knife for animating to music. The first thing you always need to do is to select the song in the timeline and click on beat edit's load music button. Then beat edit detects the beats in the music and shows them as these blue lines here in the waveform preview. If you play back the song, you can also hear the beats as click sounds. And now you can do all kinds of things with these beats. You can, for example, create beat markers on the selected layer to have a visual representation of them right in the timeline. Here are tools to delete, shift, copy and paste markers. And here you can repeat keyframes. So you can create a custom animation and then repeat it at each beat, for example. And here you can also stagger layers or stagger keyframes in sync with the beat. But we want to use yet another tool, namely the Beat Wiggle component, which you see in this panel here. The Beat Wiggle creates all kinds of animations for 2D or 3D layers or individual sliders. Depending on which option you choose, you get a different preview of the result. So here you can see how the slider is moved, and if you go back to 2D layer option, you see a preview of the layer movement. Now for each of these animation types you have all kinds of presets that you can use. Yeah, if you go for example here to position, rotation, scale, random pulses and play back, you can see that it moves entirely different now. And you can quickly try all the different presets that are here. Now you can see there's really a variety of styles. And if you like one of them, you can simply select all the layers that you want to animate this way and click the apply button to create keyframes. And this is what it looks like. Now, if you want to have more control over these presets, you can dive in here into the parameters and you can see this preset only animates the position, for example. And currently it animates them in up to 300 pixels in both X and Y direction up to, so this is uh, with maximum randomness in both directions, and it returns by 50%. This means after each move that goes in one direction, it goes 50% back again, but not entirely returns to its original position. So let me show you how this is looking like. So if we would change here this, for example, to set the Y component to zero, now you can see it only moves in X direction, right? If we set the return to um, 100, you can see that it stays in this position and only, so it always comes 100% back to where it was, okay? If we set this to zero, you can see that it moves and wherever it moves, it stays and continues its movement from there. This is the return. You can fade in and out these things and you can also, for all of these parameters, have more than one value. So if I click on plus here, you can see that it toggles between these two things and this gets even more clear if we turn off the randomness. Now it always moves first 300 and then 200 pixels. Yeah? So if we set this here to something smaller, let's say to just 20, now you see we always have first a small move and then a big move, small move, big move. And if you wonder why it's going left and right after it has hit the boundary of the composition, this is because of the clipping, which is currently set to ping pong. Uh, you could also set this to loop, for example, which means whenever it disappears on the one side, it appears on the other side. Or, of course, you could entirely show the uh, disable clipping, which would also mean that it leaves your composition at one point in time. Okay? So, or clipping, which means it stays at the borders and waits there. I hope this gives you a rough idea how powerful Beat Edit actually is, and this is just the beginning. Because so far the Beat Wiggle reacted to all beats, but if you go to the Beat Selection tab, you can also refine to which beats the tool should actually react. So now it only reacts to every fourth beat, for example. 
and you can also add extra markers. So the orange lines which show up here now are technically not beats, but they are other rhythmically relevant points or intense peaks in the music and Beat Edit can react to those also if you want to add more randomness or less regular patterns, so to speak. If you want to learn more about all of this, you find more tutorials on Beat Edit on marmoworld.com or on the product page on AE Scripts. So that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you enjoyed working with automation blocks and Beat Edit and you got an idea how efficient your workflows become with these tools. I'm Matthias from mamaworld.com and I'm looking forward to see you in the next tutorial.